All right, YouTube, there have been a series of swarms of earthquakes at Mount St. Helens. Naturally, everyone on the weird side of YouTube is saying it's going to blow. Mount St. Helens is going to, you know, it's just going to suddenly explode like it did in 1980. It's had a series of smaller eruptions over time as well. They're not all like catastrophic. Uh, and that was <laughs> a large eruption uh, back in the 90s, I can remember. You know, it gives off a puff of smoke and suddenly everybody's on edge. Uh, however, this is evidence that the magma chamber is refilling. It's not necessarily evidence that it's going to blow anytime soon. It could take another 10 years before it erupts at all. Uh, all things considered, you could definitely have smaller events now, basically. I mean, tomorrow you could see a little puff of smoke start wafting out of it. And, you know, one of the sides starts sliding down. People get all worried. Uh, the problem is that it's sort of a, a cock tease for those who want uh, cataclysm. Those who, who want bad things to happen to the world because they're tired of it being so stagnant, boring, normal. Uh, they don't like the status quo. They want something exciting to happen because they're saturated constantly by fear-mongering, by intrigue, even like the, the fictional shows that they watch. I mean, look at the sort of stuff that's on TV that's popular. You, know, you think of The Walking Dead. You know, it's about the apocalypse, essentially. And there's like a small group of survivors trying to make it. And people are like, yeah, I want to live in that kind of world. You know, unbridled, real-life, like, video game violence. You just, these are zombies, so it's okay to whack them in the back of the head and chainsaw them apart and blow them away with a shotgun and stuff. That's sort of what people, I think that's the reason why stuff like that is so popular. It doesn't even start in this era. It's like the last generation popularizes this sort of thing. Since the atomic era... Things have been so steadily more and more screwed up. Things get steadily darker and darker within fiction uh, and so forth. But Mount St. Helens is like the great cock tease. It's not like Yellowstone where you haven't really, in living memory, there has been no event at Yellowstone. We're just going on what scientists estimate, essentially, as far as how long ago there was the last super eruption. Then there are these steam events that are smaller but still, you know, regionally catastrophic. And that might happen ever However many, so many years, you know, 10,000 years you have this, every 100,000 you have that. Um, so, I mean, we don't have anything really in, in human history as far as when records were kept to really compare it to. But then you have the Cocktease sites, which is what you might term Mount St. Helens, the Cascadia Fault, the New Madrid system, where at any given time, technically, yes, you could have a massive cataclysm that just fucking rips the earth apart. There's ash everywhere. There's sulfur venting out of the ground. And the soil liquefies and everything within 100 miles is utterly destroyed. It's like the wildfire in Canada. People are sort of role-playing as though uh, it's going to engulf every tree in the nation of Canada. It's obviously not going to happen. It's already catastrophic, especially for Fort McMurray, but is it a major world-changing event other than the oil market stabilizing because there's less oil on the market? Not really, and not, not more than short term. Mount St. Helens is one of these Cocktease sites. At any given time, yeah, there could be a massive explosion there and all of a sudden everything within 100 miles just blanketed in ash. It's like Vesuvius. Everything's screwed up. The whole world is watching. Everyone's sending flowers, forming, you know, relief funds for the families of those that died and so forth. And it's, you know, it's constantly in the news for a month. It's like a Fukushima or something like that. But then again, at any other, at any given time, it could remain as it is now, which is it's not erupting. Um, so I would caution people, just because you have a quake swarm at a volcano, you had quake swarms in Iceland at Bardabunga, or, or however it's pronounced, I'm not Icelandic and I don't speak Icelandic, so excuse me for that one. There were quake swarms there, and yeah, the, the mountains, you know, started smoking, then the volcano started erupting, everyone was saying it's going to trigger other volcanoes. And I said, well, maybe, yeah, it could, but ultimately did it? No, now there's no activity really there. Mount St. Helens could be similar. This quake swarm could be indicating, yeah, it's, it's about to explode suddenly. It could also indicate it's going to take another 5, 10, 20 years for it to recharge, and then it'll explode. I might be an old man by the time it explodes next. I might be dead by the next time it has a major eruption. It might be a thousand years from now, it could suddenly collapse in on itself, and they declare it like a dead volcano because something shifted in the earth, and now all of a sudden it's not repressurizing. There's no way to tell. Um, that's the 
the problem with natural disasters. We're still in our infancy when it comes to the science of predicting anything regarding seismic and volcanic events. It's still in its infancy. We still don't even fully understand every tenet of how these things work. New theories still come out. It's like the theory of evolution. It's like assuming that some theory dreamed up a hundred years ago is the end-all be-all. There's nothing to add on to it. We understand everything about it. Every classification is perfectly right. You know, our understanding of, of everything is modern. We're in the modern time, so we're perfect. And everything before is caveman era, and we'll just we're we're plateauing now, and we'll never advance again because we're already at our peak. It's not going to happen, <clears throat> certainly not for any foreseeable future. So as far as Mount St. Helens goes, yeah, it could give off a volcanic eruption tomorrow, or it could be another week, or it could be a month, or a year, or a decade, or a century. <laughs> we don't have any real way of knowing. Odds are good, though, because of the number of eruptions. Odds are fairly good. We'll live to see a couple more eruptions of Mount St. Helens. Will they be like world-ending apocalyptic scenarios? Probably not. Uh, not unless something really unforeseen happens and all of a sudden it turns out, oh, there's a second magma chamber ten times larger than the first bubbling up, and now there's here's the countdown to our imminent doomsday event. Um, probably not going to happen. There are far greater concerns like nuclear war. Yellowstone would probably be a greater concern. Toba. Um, all sorts of things that are a bit more important. But it is interesting. You know, volcanoes are interesting things. I would just uh, say, anyone saying, oh, well, it's going to blow in the next week or so, science agrees. They're probably getting their science from before it's news or Alex Jones or something. Uh, not necessarily quite kosher, so to speak. So, yeah, uh, take it with a grain of salt when people tell you the next disaster is looming right up on the horizon. But also take it with a grain of salt when the mainstream media says, oh, it's just recharging, don't worry, we've got years before it blows again. Because they don't know either. They're just going based on some estimate given by a generic scientist, often not even a named individual. So it's basically the fucking same thing. That's about all. Peace out.